Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour of an Acer Aspire 7 A715 series computer. I'm going to show you all the various components you can access once you're inside. So first thing, power down your computer. Make sure it's off and unplugged from the charger. We're then going to flip it over to access our bottom case screws. So you have these four screws along the bottom edge of my screen here these two near the top on the left, these three on the right hand side, these two near the top middle, and then these two in the middle of the bottom case. So quite a lot of screws. After removing those screws, we're gonna take a small flat, preferably plastic pry tool and go across the seam of the bottom case and pry it up from the rest of the computer. I say plastic pry tool because in this situation, metal's gonna scratch your case a lot more than plastic will. So I tend to go with a hard uh, plastic pry tool like a, a guitar pick. Um, but you're gonna start on one end, work your way down the side. Don't put the pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Just keep it right on the edge and be firm but slow. If you get stuck somewhere, leave it, go to the other side and go around in, in the other direction. So once you get your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. So as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, I have it sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with any tools or supplies to help you in your computer projects, there'll be a link above, also below in the description. It'll be a list of a lot of the tools and supplies that I use in my shop. So before I do anything in a computer, I always remove or at least unplug my battery. A computer is safer to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. Your battery is right here towards the bottom and it's held in by these two screws, one on either side near the top corners and it plugs into the motherboard right there. So if you're looking to remove your battery, you would undo those two screws and then right here if you look at your plug, your white plug, there's a good size grip on either side. So you can put your fingernails or a pry tool in that grip and pull it out of that port. Um, as with any cables in a computer, we want to try to avoid pulling on the wires themselves when at all possible. We could damage the plugs. So we always want to pull or manipulate the actual plugs themselves rather than pull on the wires. Now the battery information I have for this, this was an Acer part number AP1 8C8K battery. Uh, it was a 50.29 watt hour, 11.25 volt. So that's how you would search if you're looking for your own battery replacement. If it makes it any easier, I will have a link above. I will also have the link below in the description. It'll be a list of all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer. I will try to have a couple different battery options in there for you if that makes it easier to find it. And I guess the last thing I can mention about a battery replacement, if you're here because your computer's not turning on, if you're having trouble getting it to power on, you can't see a lot of signs of life, it could be your battery or it could be something else. Very often laptop computers should work well without a battery, just with the power adapter plugged in. So if your computer's not turning on, it may be another cause than just a bad battery. There will be a video link above also below in the description, it'll be a video tutorial showing you how to troubleshoot a laptop that's not turning on so you can find the actual cause of the problem. Your solid state drive is right here. There's a single M.2 NVMe port right there. And this solid state drive is held in by a single screw right there. So you undo that screw, you release the drive, you can pull it out of this port right there. I think most of you will have a 512 gigabyte stick that comes stock in this computer. So I will have the solid state drive spec information below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement, but I will also have a link above and below in the description. It'll be a list of all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer. I will try to have a 500 gigabyte stick in there if you're just looking to replace it. I'll try to have a terabyte and then a two terabyte stick if you wanna fully max it out because I believe that the max storage for this computer is two terabytes. And I guess the last thing I can shout out about this operation of replacing your solid state drive, if you are replacing it, you will most likely need to install an operating system onto the new one that you install. 
uh, below in the description, I will have two video tutorials for you, depending on which one you want to do. One will show you how to install Windows 10 onto an Acer computer. The other will show you how to install Windows 11. So your RAM ports are right here. You have two of them uh, for two sticks. Most of you stock will only have one. Uh, this computer has a max RAM capacity of 32 gigabytes. Uh, this is DDR4 RAM. And the specific RAM that was in this computer was PC4 3200 AA RAM. I will have that spec information below in the description uh, if you're looking for your own replacements or upgrades. Uh, I will also have a link below in the description. It'll have a list of all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer. I'll try to have some RAM options in there. Um, since this is an eight gigabyte stick for most of you, if all you're looking to do is replace the RAM, I'll have an eight gigabyte stick option. I will also have a 16 gigabyte stick option if you're looking for a slight upgrade. And if you wanna max this out to the maximum 32 gigabytes, I will have a 32 gigabyte kit option, which will give you two 16 gigabyte sticks for each port. And I always recommend to people, if you are looking to upgrade your laptop's performance, uh, upgrading your RAM and your solid state drive are probably the easiest, fastest ways you can do that. They're both very large components to the speed factor of your computer. So the way you operate the RAM, there's two spring-loaded metal arms on either side. You would gently pry those apart from each other away from the RAM stick. It would then release, and very often it even pops up a little bit. You can grab it here in the center and slide it out of this port. And to get your RAM back in, as you notice, there's a long part to the RAM stick and a short part here. So you can't put the RAM in upside down. It only goes in one way. And once you get it in nice and flush, the gold section here is nice and even all the way across. You would just press down in the center of the RAM stick, and then these arms would latch onto it and secure it in place. So your speakers are down here. You have this one to the left of my screen, bottom corner, this one to the right of my screen, bottom corner. Now these speakers are not actually screwed in. They're just held on by these rubber washers that go over the posts for sound insulation. And this one plugs into the motherboard here. This one plugs into the motherboard here. Now again, try not to pull on wires, especially these speaker wires. They're very tiny, very fragile. They can easily be yanked right out of the plug. Um, you do have grips on either side of that plug. So you could use your fingernails or a small pry tool to wiggle those out of the motherboard port. Now, I will have a link below in the description. It'll have a list of all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer. I will try to put down uh, some speaker replacements there if you need those. I will also have their information below in the description. They have pretty long part numbers, so I'm not gonna read them out now, but they'll be below in the description if you're looking for your own speaker replacements. Um, I guess the last thing I can mention about replacing your speakers, if you are having audio issues or sound issues, if the sound fluctuates, if it's different on different software, it could be that you need to fix your drivers or need a system update. It may not be anything wrong with your speakers, unless of course they sound like junk, the speakers are blown and you obviously need new ones. But if it seems like a system issue, there'll be a video link above also below in the description, it'll be a tutorial on how to make sure all your drivers are up to date and correct and how to update your system. That can help your sound issues very often without having to get in here and physically replace your speakers. So here's your Wi-Fi card right here toward the center of my screen underneath the right hand fan. It's held down by a single screw right here in the middle. After you undo that screw, this Wi-Fi card will pull right out of the port right there. And then all you'll have left are these antenna wire. They run along the fan there, around it, through this hinge assembly. Those are just snaps. Those snap right up and off of the Wi-Fi card. To get them back on can be a little tricky. They have to be at a straight 90 degree angle to snap back on. And if they are off angle a little bit, you are strong enough to damage them when you push them. So be very careful. Uh, go easy. Make sure it's at a 90 degree angle. It can be frustrating, but you can get it on. Uh, I will try to have the Wi-Fi specs below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement, but I will also have a link below in the description. It'll have all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer, and I will try to have a Wi-Fi, uh, at least one or two options in there for you to help you if, if you're looking for that replacement.
And I guess the last thing I can mention about this sort of Wi-Fi card replacement, if you're having Wi-Fi issues in your computer, if you're not being able to see the networks or sign into the networks, it could be something other than a Wi-Fi card. Uh, there'll be a video link below in the description. It'll be a tutorial in how to troubleshoot if your Wi-Fi is not working, uh, because if you don't have to get in here and perform a physical repair, it could save you some time. So here's your CMOS battery here towards the left of my screen above the speaker. It's held in by double-sided tape and it plugs into the motherboard right here. So I will have a link above as well as below in the description. It'll have a list of all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer. And I will try to have a CMOS battery option in there for those of you that are looking for a replacement. To replace this, you would simply uh, pop that right up and off of where it is. Again, it's just double-sided tape, so that comes off fairly easily. And to unplug it, uh, there's a grip on either side of that white plug. You can use your fingernails or you can use a pry tool to jimmy that out. Don't pull on that uh, plug again, as, as sometimes you can pull the wire right out of the plug um, and damage it. If you're just here to reset BIOS and you're not looking to replace your CMOS battery, then you don't need to rip it up. You can leave it uh, stuck down there. All you would need to do is unplug this. Uh, leave it unplugged for maybe 15, 20 seconds, and that should be sufficient to reset your BIOS system settings. Uh, side note to that operation, in most cases, that will not reset your BIOS password. It just resets your BIOS system settings. I'll have more information on the BIOS password reset below in, in the description. Um, and I guess as a last side note to this kind of procedure, this is one of the troubleshooting steps to fixing a computer that's not turning on. Uh, so if that's why you're here, yes, this is one step you can do to troubleshoot that, but there are others. Um, I will have a video link above and below in the description. It'll be a tutorial in how to troubleshoot a laptop not turning on because that's just one of the things you can try. So here's your fans right there and your heatsink assembly going over CPU, GPU. You have a screw right here for the fan, another screw right here, and then a screw there. And some of you may have a screw there. Mine didn't. Uh, the computer may have already been entered. Uh, but that's how you would release the fans. And then for the heat sink, you have two screws here. And then two screws here. And a single screw here. So that's how you would access your fan, your heat sink assembly. If you're here because your computer is overheating, there will be a video link above and in the description. It'll be a tutorial on how to deal with an overheating laptop. You're gonna to wanna to clean your fans out as well as possible, your vents, make sure that's all clean. While you're in here, you might as well vacuum or blow this whole area out. However, one big thing to note is when you're in here, um, if you ever remove your heat sink assembly for any reason and you expose the thermal paste to air, you definitely wanna reapply it. Uh, so that video will also show you how to clean off all the old thermal paste. You don't wanna add new stuff on top of old stuff and then it'll show you how to apply thermal paste correctly. Also a thing to keep in mind, cheaper thermal paste is going to be cheaper and the more expensive stuff usually is gonna do a better job at facilitating that heat transfer out. So just keep in mind with thermal paste, you do get what you pay for. I'll have some thermal paste options below in the description in that link I told you about with all the tools and supplies for repair projects. Thanks again so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like and share if this helped you out, if you think it can help someone else out. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this, or if you just want to keep me on hand to answer any of your future computer questions. I do try to answer all questions throughout my channel at least a couple times a day. Also, feel free to check out the related link section below in the description. From time to time, I do try to add things in there that I think will help you uh, with your general computer life, make it more productive, more enjoyable. So thanks again for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.